1997, a terrifying situation, or rather several of them, happened on the Mir space station. These stations are often like houses in space, with a crew of astronauts living and working on them. Back in the 80s and 90s, Mir was a marvel of human achievement, a huge floating laboratory. But it wasn't without its dangers and horrible incidents. In February of 97, astronaut Jerry Lineker had been living and working on Mir with his crewmates. Then one night, things went terribly wrong in the Kavat-1 module. An oxygen generator, a machine that burns chemicals to release breathable oxygen, suddenly burst into flames. They were trapped in a tiny enclosed space with smoke filling the air, and there's literally no way to escape. The fire blazed for 14 minutes. It filled the station with smoke so thick, the astronauts couldn't even see their own hands. They immediately reached for the gas masks, which should have been their lifeline. Unfortunately, the masks didn't work for everyone. By the time of the fire in 97, Mir was already 11 years old, well beyond its expected lifespan. The equipment, including gas masks, most likely degraded over time due to the harsh conditions of space. The Mir underwent regular resupply missions, but regular maintenance is challenging due to how costly and complex space missions are. And when they tried to grab fire extinguishers, they found them strapped to the walls too tightly to use easily. It was just one disaster after another. Luckily, the fire finally burned itself out, but not before leaving burns on some of the crew. Leniger, who was a trained physician, treated his crewmates. He also wrote a report for NASA about the incident. But NASA downplayed the event, treating it as a useful learning experience for future missions. Besides, it wasn't the first incident like that. On an earlier Mir expedition, the oxygen generator also burned for a few seconds. The investigation showed that the oxygen generator canister was contaminated with something, most likely hydrocarbons from latex gloves. And this was just the beginning. A few months earlier, in June, another incident happened with a British-American astronaut, Michael Fole, and two of his other crewmates, Vasily Sibliev and Alexander Lazutkin. Fole is fluent in the Russian language, and so that's how they spoke. Michael had heard about the previous fire, but thought that now that it's fixed, there shouldn't be any problems. If only he knew. One day, a cargo spaceship called Progress was supposed to bring supplies to the station, stuff like food and equipment. It was slowly docking, and then suddenly, it crashed into the mirror. This happened out of nowhere. The crash caused a hole in one of Mir's rooms, called the Spectre Module. Air started rushing out into space through the hole. That's the most horrifying thing that could happen in space. Without air, the astronauts wouldn't have survived long. They had only 23 minutes before they would lose consciousness. Fole's ears began popping as the pressure dropped. But fortunately, they all went through NASA's intense training and were prepared for stuff like this. Michael went to the Soyuz capsule, a space station lifeboat. If things got worse, he planned to use it to escape back to Earth. He was waiting for his crewmates. But to his shock, they didn't show up. Instead, they stayed behind to find the hole and fix the station. In situations like this, it's prescribed not to risk it and evacuate. But Vasily and Alexander decided to try and save it. Michael was waiting for them, but he could hear them shouting to each other in Russian as they desperately tried to fix things. Time was running out. There was only seven minutes of air left. And finally, they managed to seal the broken module and stop the air lane. But just as they thought they could take a breath, another problem came up. The crash had damaged the station's solar panels. In just moments, the entire space station lost all its power. No lights, no fans to circulate air, and no way to talk to anyone on Earth. And to make things worse, because of the collision, Mir started spinning out of control. It was a total catastrophe. Michael had an idea to stop the spinning. They could use engines on the Soyuz capsule to push the station and stabilize it. They decided to try it. Unfortunately, the first attempt only made things worse. The spinning got faster, but they decided to try it again, this time using short bursts of the engines. And eventually, it worked. The station stopped spinning, and they were safe again. And you'd think they'd go home after that. But even after this terrifying experience, Michael stayed on Mir for four more months to finish his mission. 
Later in 1995, he went back to space and even set a record for the longest spacewalk at the time – eight and a half hours outside the spaceship. But Mir was just getting worse. The stress of living there was so intense that Vasily Sibliev developed heart problems during that mission. Literally the same year, just a couple of months later, in August, another disaster struck. The main computer suddenly went down. This left the station just drifting in space with no control. Without this computer, Mir couldn't align its solar panels with the sun. This meant that the station's batteries were draining rapidly. In space, no power means no communication and no life support. And remember the Progress supply ship? Well, this power outage happened exactly when another Progress ship was trying to dock, just like the last time. But now, the computers that controlled the process weren't talking to each other properly. Commander Anatoly Selevyov had to take over manually. And it got wild. Because the monitors on the Progress ship weren't working, he had to use a monitor on Mir to see what the supply ships saw. It was like trying to park a car using a camera feed from someone else's dashboard. When the supply ship got just a couple of feet away from docking, the screen went completely blank. Solevyov couldn't see anything. He could only pray and guess. But miraculously, he nailed the docking. But the main computer was still down, and Mir was spinning rapidly. The crew had to save the remaining power as much as possible and stop the spinning. So they shut down all non-essential systems and ran for the Soyuz module. They decided to try what Michael did before them – to fire the capsule's engines in short bursts and push Mir back into position. They had to steer the station manually, and with no modern tools to guide them, they had to rely on the stars, like sailors hundreds of years ago. Finally, the spinning stopped. But they still only had a few days of air. After that, they'd have to rely on chemical candles – devices that burn to produce oxygen, but also carry the risk of fire. And fire, as Mir's history showed, was not something they wanted to mess with. While the scientists were trying to reassure everyone on Earth that things were under control, the crew began fixing the broken computer. This task took hours, all in darkness, because there were no solar panels. But somehow they managed to repair it. After that, the astronauts had to face the sun to recharge Mir's batteries. Only then could they even think about tackling the long list of other repairs like fixing the still-damaged Spectre module. Mir had turned into a survival reality show. Once Mir was over a decade old, it became known for its cramped, cluttered interiors. It was full of broken equipment, leftover supplies, leaking pipes, and all sorts of odd junk floating around. The astronauts said that it was hard to move and felt like living inside a dirty, leaking submarine. Another huge issue was mold. It started growing on walls, in air vents, and even on the astronauts' personal items. Now imagine dealing with all of that in zero gravity while trying to conduct experiments. Finally, in March 2001, after 15 years in space, Mir was finally intentionally deorbited. It broke apart in Earth's atmosphere and burned up over the Pacific Ocean. Well, despite all the problems, Mir paved the way for the International Space Station that is still working to this day. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.